the session will start with a presentation by Mr. Alex Lim, Secretary General of the International Esports Federation, and uh, he'll explain the uh, International Esports Academy. So please welcome Mr. Alex Lim to the stage. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alex Lim. I'm sitting as the uh, Secretary General of ISF at this moment. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lunch. Um, before I start my presentation, actually, uh, I want to share um, my feeling that I'm having very touching moments. Um, it has been one of my uh, core dreams to make this kind of um, summit um, seen three years ago, um, when I realized that esports is quite well connected with the um, um, sports concept and game industry and IT technology, and um, I kind of came up with the thought that it would be very nice uh, if we can have uh, somehow um, these old people from diverse uh, sectors. Uh, at the same place, at the same moment, then we can maybe uh, making somehow synergy. And actually, uh, like I thought, I think I'm witnessing that uh, with all your uh, bright thought and, and yes, I'm kind of witnessing this synergy at this moment. So I really appreciate for your um, attendance for this summit and um, I'd like to start with the, uh, my presentation. Um, about our initiative for athlete welfare uh, related to uh, International Esports Academy. Protect players. Um, recently, um, I'm so into uh, this Korean hip hop competition um, TV show. I want to just check my uh, swag. So uh, when I say protect, you say pl players. Protect. Protect. Yeah, I think I have a swag. So um, this is, this will be our new sl slogan for next year's of ISF, protect players. Um, to be honest, uh, like I said before, I, I, I'm having this synergy as um, I have this very beloved, my supporter, Mr. Vlad Marinescu, um, having a meeting last night um, he actually gave this idea about having somehow fabulous slogan, protect players, and you know, I had to change my slide yesterday. So this is pretty new one, but we will definitely put this forward to uh, push. Um, Esports, as everybody knows, it grows so fast. Um, according to the uh, Super Data Research and Yuju, the esports will generate up to like 1.8 billion a year by 2020. And with the uh, rapid growth of this esports market, the number of professional, is, uh, professional players are growing so fast. And like you know, everybody wants to become a professional players, uh, even in Korea, even in the United States, even in European countries. But we need to see actually what is the uh, issues and problems that we are missing um, behind the scene, uh, the bright scene that we are uh, looking at at this moment. As this market grows, actually it generates a lot of um, uh, different sectors and it generates a lot of occupations. From referees to commentators, um, Actually, there are uh, increasing demands for esports experts, but zero. There is no such specialized human resource training system for esports at this moment. So it means that we still have very professional um, esports experts in the different sectors, but we do not have the uh, one single stream which can support and sustain this industry uh, further. 
The other issues, the age groups, the demographics of esports players, as we all have been through, teenage years is the most critical period to develop life skills. We have this access to education when we are teenagers, when we are schools. Um, I used to be working in the uh, sports marketing company and uh, some sports uh, um, organizations. Uh, the first time that I ever done uh, this sports business was in my high school days when there was World Cup going on. I set up this you know, small sports betting game with my uh, friends. That was my first uh, time um, that I did this uh, sports business. Actually, I was almost suspended from the school. And so, most of professional players spend their teenage years for competitive gaming. Like all the uh, athletes coming from traditional sports field, they spend a lot of time to train themselves to become a successful player. Um, even for me, I was in the um, shooting team back in the school days. Um, from the uh, Korean elite sports structure uh, in the school, I was quite isolated from the uh, classes that I used to have. But still, I was uh, belong to the uh, school, so I still have the chance to get access to uh, education. But now, we are looking at the very different phenomenon from the esports scene at this moment. This is the numbers that I'm looking at. 34% of players from 7th Esports World Championship we had last year were teenagers. Nowadays, many professional players in the world are admiring Korean professional players. 20% of Korean pro players are only middle school graduated. And the other factor is actually um, making this happen. 22% of Korean pro players dropped out their high school or university for competitive gaming. This means actually they lost their tie with the uh, education. Like I said, just like any other sports, it's really, really difficult to be in that um, the small place to become a, a top player, successful player, professional one. And even if players become the successful player, they will also face very um, hardness and difficulties. Why? Esports is based in uh, the video games at this moment. Um, it's, that is the most different part uh, from the sports. And as you all know, we have the uh, life cycle of the games. Um, StarCraft 1, we used to love. We don't see StarCraft 1 anymore. And some games are rising and some games are dying. So when the professional players becomes a very top player for that game, and if the game collapses, such professional gamer should take another effort to adapt to another game to sustain their career as a professional player. And even this trend in this market, the trend is changing so fast. So even that makes the game life cycle quite shorter. And there's no uh, such player carry system. And all these factors make the professional player's life cycle shorter. And some other facts. No one made through qualifiers in their 30s during 14 years of professional StarCraft League in Korea. Oldest champion was at the age of 23 in this pro league in Korea. So, esports really needs 
integrated human resource training system focused on the, uh, these players to protect and to provide the second chance of life when they have this distance from the uh, gaming scene. I want to ask, who is going to take this responsibility? We are seniors. We've been through this. Now we are 30s, 40s, 50s, maybe 70s. <laughs> okay. So now, um, with the great support of our partner, beloved partner, WCA, um, this is one other dreams that we have been having. We are coming up with this International Esports Academy. Through this International Esports Academy that we are launching at this moment, we aim to educate retired esports players to find more job opportunity. And not only retired players, but also the others who want to work in the esports industry because it's fascinating, it's attracting the people in the world. So we want to give an opportunity for the normal people who has this distance from the esports scene, the other opportunity to work in the uh, esports industry. And supply professional esports human resources to demanding parties game companies, esports organizers, broadcasting companies, national federations, media, even for the other sports disciplines. Because we understand the new trend, such as international technology, I mean, uh, information technology, which can be um, well applied to the uh, traditional sports scene. And we want to create um, finally, athlete welfare ecosystem through this International Esports Academy. So this is uh, how we want to consist uh, this Esports uh, Academy. First, we are um, about ready to open this uh, online session, e-learning system, by the uh, first week of the sept September. And then um, we want to give this um, education training to uh, normal people through the online so people can, can, can access easily. And then right after that, um, as reviewing the, um, their performance through the online session as well as their career as the uh, esports player, we want to uh, select some, several people to come to the uh, advanced offline session. Um, then as connecting it to uh, ISF uh, tournament platform and our partners tournament platform and evaluate um, and actually um, teach them how it works in the uh, reality and the field. Sorry. So uh, this is the plan for the uh, curriculum. Um, this year, we are already uh, almost uh, in the final stage of um, referee and coaching and, you know, caster commentator course uh, curriculums. And next year, we'll be uh, opening the um, broadcasting production and the uh, marketer courses. So this is what we have done. Um, we had set up the uh, TF team, task force team to um, um, developed these uh, curriculums and did a lot of interviews from the uh, professional coming from esports industries and um, we did conducted already conducted international Africa conference and evaluated in World Cyber Arena season one final and um, the first online training, like I said, it will be launched by the uh, first week of the se September and October. We will be uh, opening the offline session and we'll uh, do the uh, field training at ISF's uh, tournament platform. And 2017, um, we will develop eSports specialized broadcasting and marketing courses and we will do somehow maintenance because this curriculum um, developed for this year is not perfect yet. So we'll do somehow maintenance of existing courses and 
we will expand number of trainees as well as we will uh, try to research on what kind of occupations and what kind of field that we need to cover and we will try to expand and extend um, the, the sectors that we can cover from this academy. So this is the strength that ISF has. Um, maybe we, have, we do not have the, uh, the best brand of uh, esports uh, event, but we have these 47 national federations, good coverage worldwide. So we can have this global attention, public access, and um, applying multiple languages so we can provide it to uh, more people worldwide. And actually, our national federations can operate it at the domestic level. So actually, they can focus on the uh, domestic level of professionals to apply those human resources in their field, in their nations. Um, so ISF will directly operate the uh, advanced offline session and train retired players and non-players to become esports experts. Um, and we'll provide more job opportunities to train esports experts to work in esports industry and how. This is the uh, matrix that we want to make this happen. Um, starting from the academy, train the expertise to work in the industry. And we want to make somehow MOU with the uh, demanding parties, game companies, preparer companies, broadcasting companies, event organizers, and so on. So we want to sign the uh, MOU somehow with these demanding parties and we provide this expertise to these uh, demanding parties as internships first. Then those demanding parties can uh, provide somehow the fund and um, through the uh, corporate social responsibility uh, program and we want to raise that fund and using that fund we want to actually back up this internship program uh, which can actually um, give back um, the benefit to the um, supporting parties. So, some of you know, coming from the uh, uh, sports industry, actually we have one guy coming from the uh, FIFA Master course. Um, actually, this FIFA Master alumni is currently working in various sports fields and the one good thing is the, their network internationally and cross sector of different sp sport disciplines and different sports institutions. So actually we want to make one good network of professionals through our final goal which is ISF Master. This is our final goal. As using this International Esports Academy we want to set up the uh, concrete um, institution which can actually teach and train not only about the esports industry itself but also about management, laws and everything. So we can actually provide somehow opportunity for our esports players to work in the uh, cross section like uh, to work in the uh, baseball, basketball and football even in the future. So um, thank you. This is my um, end of the presentation. Um, um, as getting back to the uh, first slide, I want to uh, check up uh, our new slogan. Uh, on three, I want all of you to uh, speak out for our new slogan. One, two, three. Thank you.